Hello everyone. Welcome to this Autodesk screencast presentation. Just dealing with a demonstration on how to get topography into Revit. What I'm going to be doing in this demonstration is using three pieces of software. I'm going to start with Autodesk InfraWorks and I'm going to take it from here through to Autodesk Format and then through to Revit as the final application. So to start off here in InfraWorks, I have the application open and I'm going to select my Model Builder option. And the Model Builder option just allows me to open up a world map essentially and it allows me to locate my project wherever I am in the world. So straight away we can see that the nice thing about this method is that I can get terrain from anywhere in the world regardless of where I am. So I'm going to focus in here on Cape Town, South Africa, which is where I'm located at the moment. And I'm going to use this three anchor bay green point C point area. And there is also signal hill sitting right here. So I know that the terrain um, is quite hilly and mountainous in this location. So I'm going to use it so that we can see some of the different levels. Top right hand corner of my screen, I have area of interest and beneath it I have four methods. These methods are simply different methods of creating the boundary that you would like to work with. So this option is simply to draw a rectangle so I can just click and drag a rectangle anywhere on my screen over here. As I'm doing so I can see that the square kilometer is increasing as I increase my boundary. When I'm happy with the extents that I've chosen I can just let go. What I do from this point is very simple. I enter a model name so I give it something descriptive and logical to me and then I say create model. So unfortunately at the time of this recording cloud services are down so I'm not going to be able to create this right now but essentially what's going to happen is when I say create model it's going to take a little bit of time to generate based on how big of an area you have chosen and it will send you an email when it's actually complete and that area will appear here on your home screen. So previously I've already done um, a test of Cape Town roughly of that same area so I'm just going to select this and I'm going to open it up. Okay, so pay attention to the size of this model. This is eight megabytes. And you can see the amount of information we have here is actually quite extensive. Okay, so depending how big the model is, it's gonna depend how long it's going to take to actually open. So this is the InfraWorks inter interface. You can see that it extracts quite a few things from that map. It extracts the terrain uh, very nicely. It's basically a Google Earth image and it actually has some buildings here as well that we can actually manipulate here in InfraWorks if we want to. That's not the focus of this demonstration though so I'm going to leave everything as is and I'm just going to extract a little piece of this site. Let's say that I wanted to work with this area over here. So the first thing that I want to do is just get this area out of InfraWorks and into Format. So to do that I'm going to go to my settings and utility icon uh, to get my tabs to appear down the left hand side and I'm going to use this option export 3D model. Okay there are two things that I have to do here. First thing is I have to give this a file location to save to. So I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to place it on my desktop for now and I also need to do one important thing over here. Save as type is not going to be FBX. That's the default export option with Autodesk InfraWorks. I need to change it to an OBJ file. So I'm going to switch it to an OBJ file and I'll just call this Cape Town test for now. And I'm going to save. Okay, now I need to define the extents that I would like to export. So I can use this entire model. I can export this entire thing. I'm not going to do that simply because the size of the site you're working with does have an impact on how long everything is going to take to generate. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the polygon option. So this is actually a button that I can select. When I click it, it'll take me back into my model. And as you can see, it says, please define a region. So now I can literally draw lines which turn into planes that define a region. And you can see every time I click, it gives me a new side to be able to work with. So I can define the area that I want. And when I am happy with everything, I can hit the enter key on my keyboard. And now I can simply say export. So obviously depending on the size of the area that I have covered and I've defined is going to depend on how long this is going to take to export. This area is not particularly big so you can see that's taken roughly about 5 to 10 seconds. 
So from InfraWorks, that file has been exported. I can now go through to Autodesk Format. Now, the format, the reason we use format in this uh, demonstration and in this workflow is simply to act as a transitional piece of software. So I actually don't do anything inside format other than convert this file type. So remember, I've converted it to an OBJ file. So I can open an OBJ file here in format. So I can hit the file tab, import, import 3D model. And if I point my file path to my desktop, I can see that there is my Cape Town test. And I'm going to open that up. So format can import and read OBJ files, and it can export a DXF file, which is the file type that I am after in this demonstration. So I will also notice that when this file actually comes into format, more than likely it's going to be incorrectly orientated and it's going to be sitting above or below the ground plane. Okay. And I'm actually not too concerned about this. I would rather make the change that I need to make um, in Revit. Okay, so I can see that it has come through. If I sort of navigate, I can see, yes, it is below the ground plane and it's rotated 90 degrees. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that. So this is another reason why I say that this is a transitional piece of software. I'm not going to do any changes in here. All I'm using this is, as, sorry, is a location for me to be able to convert this from an OBJ file into a DXF. So I'm going to go to my file tab again, and I'm going to export this locally. And I'm going to choose the file type AutoCAD DXF. And I'm going to say export. And again, I'm just going to put that onto my desktop. And I will call it Cape Town test again. Okay, and then the final positioning of the site is going to be done in Autodesk Revit. So I'm going to go through to Revit and I'm going to open just a default architectural template. So once the template file has been opened, I'm going to go ahead and import that DXF file that I just created. So to do this, I'm going to go to my insert tab. I'm going to select import CAD. I'm going to point the file path to my desktop and I need to make sure that I change my files of type from a DWG to a DXF file so that I can actually see that document. I'm going to select it and I'm going to open it up. Okay, it will come through into Revit. I cannot see it at the moment. Um, remember, that's based on the fact that it's sitting quite a bit below my current ground plane. So I'm going to go to my 3D view just to verify that it has been brought in. Okay, and I can see my 3D model over here. So what I'll do now is go to an elevation view just so I can reorient this. So I'll head over to my east. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is select the link and I'm going to unpin it because this is a normal DXF file or a normal CAD file, so it's always going to come in pinned by default. Unpin it and I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And then I can click and drag and place this wherever it is that I want to. And I'm going to head back to my 3D view. Okay, so now that it's been correctly oriented, to, there are a couple of things that I can do with this DXF file. Um, one of the nice things that I can do is I can actually scale this. So I can do some measurements. If it hasn't come in with the right scale, I can select this DXF file as a whole and I can use my scale option here in Revit. So let's say that I knew the distance from this point to this point as being 15 meters for argument's sake. I can scale that to 15 meters and increase the overall size of my CAD file. Now, the reason why we wanted to get this into Revit as a DXF file is because DXF files have the ability to generate Revit topo surfaces from this file. So if I go across to my massing and site tab and I select on topo surface, I have an option here under my tools panel called create from import. So if I hit that drop down, I can select import instance. Now, a DXF file has uh, all these contours that we see, and Revit understands that those are contours, and it will place points along those contours and generate a topo surface from it. So if I select import instance, and I go ahead and click on my link file, it will say add points from selected layers. I want to add to all of these layers. So I'm going to leave all of them ticked, and I'm just going to say OK. 
again, depending on the size of the site, will depend on how long this takes to generate. Okay, and just like that, it has been created. And you can see that Revit has automatically placed in a whole lot of points along the surface over here. Each one of these points has an elevation value as well that I can manipulate further if I need to. But just by doing that, I'm going to hit this green tick to finish that. And I'm going to delete the DXF file just so that I can see just the Revit topo surface. So I'm going to delete it and I will set this to a shaded view. Okay. And just like that, I have the Revit topo surface that is 100% accurate according to the InfraWorks file. Okay, now this is a normal Revit topo surface, which means it acts like a normal Revit topo surface. So it can interact with things like building pads. So I could get cut and fill calculations from this if I wanted to. Um, I can use my model site settings to change the contour increments. Instead of the contours incrementing at one meter intervals, I could set it to 200, for instance, get much uh, denser contour lines. And I could go to my site plan and I can also label these contours because they act as normal Revit elements. So if I zoom in over here, I can see it's reporting all of those contour elevation values. Okay, so this was just a method that I found that I thought it would be useful to share. Um, I hope it interests you and I hope that you can find a need for it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you 